Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. It's time for Patron Week, and this time around we've got a very interesting archetype. Ish. Because it pushes the boundaries of what an archetype even is. I don't know about you, but when I think of one, it's things like Burning Abyss, Constellars, Orcist, cards that not only share an aesthetic, but also mention each other by name in their effects. But I don't think it has to be so clear cut. It's true, not a single card we're about to talk about even mentions Digital Bug by name, but come on, look at them! They're little insects made of computer parts with a number of interlocking mechanical parts. So, much like the recently covered Brave token, I'm gonna call it an archetype. Plus, archetype isn't even an officially recognized term, so I can use it however I want. Um, uh, uh oh yeah, I need to actually talk about the theme. Uh, we're gonna open up the directory to see what files we've got, run an executable to see how the program functions, then see what we can mod in to hype up the hive. It's time to see what the BuzzFeed is all about with digital bugs. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and what better way to travel down the road than on your dual runner? We'll be covering iconic 5D's characters along the way, and our next stop is 20k, where we'll start the You Say Explained series, covering Stardust, Junk, and whatever other cards we can play to help us rev it up! We've also got our Discord with a new Ask Nova channel, so you can figure out things about me like, do I like horror movies, and what's my Smash main? And a Twitter, where you can stay up to date on channel news and my bad takes. And if you really like what I do here, please consider joining my YouTube membership, it's basically like a Twitch sub, emotes included, or backing me on Patreon, where you can vote on a video that I make every month. It also gets you early access to my videos via the patron-only section of my Discord, provided I get the video done ahead of schedule. And whether you're a member or a patron, I get a schedule sent to you on the first week of the month, so you know what to expect for the next four weeks. Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with digital bugs? Well, they're a series of light insect monsters who have a number of effects that involve and are triggered by the changing of battle positions, all in service of some very spicy Xyz monsters. But first, let's start with our main deck monsters. Of note, they're all level 3, can't be used as Xyz material, except for the Xyz summon of an insect monster, and grant an effect to any Xyz monster they're used as material for. First is Digital Bug Centibit. They have 1500 attack and 500 defense, and once per turn when changed from attack to defense position, you can special summon a level 3 insect monster from your deck in defense position. And an Xyz monster that uses Centibit as material gains an effect that allows them to attack all defense position monsters your opponent controls. Something you'll find out pretty quickly is that we not only want our monsters to change to defense position, but we want to get our opponent's monsters in defense position as well. And Centibit will provide the programming needed to take advantage of that especially in combination with our other digital bugs. It makes our Xyz more frightening, but only by... a cent a bit. Digital Bug Cocoon Denser has 0 attack and 2000 defense, and once per turn, if they're in attack position, you can target a level 3 insect monster in your grave, change Cocoon Denser to defense position, and if you do, special summon that monster in defense position. And an Xyz monster that uses Cocoon Denser as material gains an effect that prevents your opponent from activating cards or effects during the damage step when attacking a defense position monster. That's a very conditional Armade's effect, but it shouldn't be much of an issue as long as our game plan is running as it should and we aren't attacking into a Link monster. And our opponent actually has any monsters to attack in too, since this won't protect us from attacking directly. So this effect kinda rewards you for following the game plan, though it also feels like it punishes you if you don't. You know, maybe if we wait a bit, this cocoon will do a little evolution of its own. Digital Bug Web Solder has 500 attack and 1500 defense, and once per turn you can target a face-up attack position monster you control, change it to defense position, and if you do, special summon a level 3 insect monster from your hand in defense position. And an Xyz monster that uses Web Solder as material gains an on Xyz summon effect that reduces the defense of all face-up monsters your opponent controls to zero and changes them to defense position. This is probably our best enabler for the theme. On its own, it's a double summon for our insects, but in tandem with other digital bugs, it helps with changing their battle position faster to get their effects going, as long as you have a bug in hand to summon. But if you can ensure that, then your game plan will run as smooth as silk. Digital Bug LED Bug has 500 attack and 0 defense, and once per turn when this face-up card is changed from attack to defense position, you can add a level 3 insect monster from your deck to your hand. And an Xyz monster that uses LED Bug as material gains an effect that lets you draw a card when it destroys a monster by battle. And that's gonna stack up a lot if you have Centibit's multi-attack. 
It's also a nice way to keep your hand stocked up, not only with cards that Web Solder can summon, but also to grab some off-theme cards that can act as alternate play starters, like Galaxy Worm and Bee Trooper Scout Buggy. Also, I'm just gonna geek out about art design decisions here, the little lights on its back form a three like it's level, I'm so happy. Digital Bug Registrider has a thousand attack and defense, and when you normal summon a level 3 insect monster, you can special summon Registrider from your hand, then you can make both monsters level 5 or 7. And if special summoned from the hand, usually by its own effect, you can change the battle position of an insect monster you control. And an Xyz monster that uses Registrider as material gains an effect that grants it a thousand attack and defense. This is far and away the best digital bug main deck monster ever printed. Not only do they immediately activate any attack to defense effects that digital bug might have, they also help get around an issue with how their effects are worded. They only give their effect to the monster they were used as Xyz material for. They don't work like Zodiacs, whose material give a persistent effect as long as they are material. This means that without level modulation, our higher ranked Xyz monsters won't get any of the benefits from their component parts once they rank up. More about that in a moment. But now, Registrider just walks in and gets us directly to the boss we want to see, and makes it a lot bigger. Even our rank 3 gets big enough to crush a lot of the competition. Which just goes to show that, even if your archetype doesn't get much good support starting out, there's always a chance they'll get something down the line. So you just have to take all of it in stride. Okay, on to our Xyz monsters. Digital Bug Skoradiator is a rank 3 monster with 1800 attack and 1400 defense, requiring two or more level 3 light insect monsters. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach two material, then target one monster your opponent controls. You change its battle position, and if you do, its effects are negated until the end of the turn. And once per turn, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the grave, you can attach it to Skoradiator as material. Wait a second. Skoradiator's incredible! They have quick effect negation that essentially takes the opponent's monster out of combat, setting them up to be run over by battle because it's usually a lot easier to deal with a monster in battle when they're in defense position. Then just add them to its own material to use its effect again later on? Dang, is that me Skoradiator is pushing around? Because I'm a huge fan. Digital Bug Corbage is a rank 5 monster with 2200 attack and 1800 defense, requiring two or more level 5 light insect monsters as material. Quick question, how many of those do you think exist? Uh-huh. But you can also make it by detaching two material from a rank 3 or 4 insect Xyz monster you control, then using it as material. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card, then target a defense position monster your opponent controls and shuffle it into their deck. And once per turn, if the battle position of any number of monsters is changed, except during the damage step, you can attach an insect from your grave to this card as Xyz material. This is an oldie I'm pretty fond of, as it was a choice tech pick in rank 3 decks. If people are afraid of summoning their monsters in attack position, say when something like Cyber Dragon Infinity is running around the format, or a lightning storm can drop at any moment, duelists will summon their non link monsters in defense position to play around them. But no worries, just make number 20, Giga Brilliant, a generic rank 3 light insect monster, forego its effect, and just detach both material to rank up into Corbeige, and that defense position monster is gone. And since Giga Brilliant's an insect, you'll always have one engraved to reattach, so you can use the effect again if your opponent wants to try and wall up. You can always leave it to Corbage to take out the garbage. Digital Bug Rhinocibus is a rank 7 monster with 2600 attack and 2000 defense, requiring two or more level 7 light insect monsters as material. Once again, how many of those can you name? Fun fact, if you said Papalogre, the Swallowtail Spy, then A, you can't special summon it unless you tribute a Fire Flyro monster, which aren't in the TCG yet, and B, I'm completely messing with you, no level 7 light insect monsters exist. But like Corbage, you can also make it by detaching two material from an Xyz monster you control, then using it as Xyz material. But this time, it has to be a rank 5 or 6 insect. It deals piercing battle damage, and once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach an Xyz material to destroy a face up monster your opponent controls with the highest defense, all if tied. Combine that with web solder and you've got yourself a board wipe, something that's even easier to achieve now thanks to Registrider. Or if you want to go for a nifty OTK, leave the web solder antics to another digital bug and make Rhinocibus with Centibit so you can deal piercing battle damage to all of your opponent's monsters. If you've got the Registrider boost and three attack targets, then that's enough to beetle your opponent.
Alright, now it's time for the spells and traps. Bug Signal is a quick play spell that has you targeting an insect Xyz monster, and Xyz summoning an insect monster that's either two ranks higher or lower than that monster, using the targeted monster as material. So it's a rank up magic astral force that works both ways, so you can gain access to whichever effects are best for you at that time. Remember, you won't get any of the component monster's effects, but notably, Skoradiator's base effect is a quick effect, so if you need some effect negation on the fly, Signal's got you covered. Also, it doesn't say you have to summon the monster in defense position, which means you can rank up during the battle phase for a little extra damage. I didn't think I'd be including the phrase, this theme has an El Shadal fusion in this episode, but of all the cards to have a similar effect, this one's a pretty prime number example. Bug Matrix is a field spell that gives all your insects a 300 attack and defense boost. You can also target an insect Xyz monster you control, and attach an insect monster from your hand to it as Xyz material. Not much to add here, the stat boost is pretty negligible, though par for the course when it comes to field spell boosts. Adding the extra material can help make up the loss of the material used for ranking up, but once again, the fact that digital bugs don't work like Zodiacs means it's not going to have the extra layer of utility. I will say that Bug Signal, which came after this card, did a great job of maintaining the continuity of this scene. This down here is Rhinocebus, and you can see a Cocoon Denser right here. I'm glad they had a good attention to detail on this, cause otherwise it really would've bugged me. Bug Emergency is a normal trap that has you targeting two level 3 insect monsters in your grave and special summoning them, but their effects are negated. You can also banish Emergency and an Xyz monster in your grave, and the level of all level 3 insect monsters you currently control become equal to the banished monster's rank until the end of the turn, but you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except insect monsters. This can get you right back into a game you wouldn't be able to play in otherwise by getting you all the material you need, and can even bump up your levels so you can go directly into your bruisers while also getting all the extra effects. Because while the component monster's effects are negated on the field, this doesn't carry over to their effects when used as Xyz material. So you can start with some unassuming electric insects, but they'll emerge as a huge threat. So that's all the digital bugs, but what do we do with them? Well, we need to go aggro, aggro, aggro. We don't have a lot of good resource management, so we need to set up the conditions where we can use Rhinocebus to carve out all of our opponent's life points as soon as possible. We'll need to play extenders, enablers, and anything we can to stop our opponent from stopping us. But what can we play to help them out? To stop our opponent, Parasite Paranoid is a great deterrent. Equip it to one of your opponent's monsters at quick effect speed, and most of their interaction just goes away. They can't even target your monster for attacks. This also opens up the opportunity to run cards like Cocoon of Ultra Evolution. This can remove your opponent's monster equipped with Paranoid, and puts to field the outstanding Metamorphosed Insect Queen. Keep any other digital bug on board, and all your monsters become immune to targeting and destruction from your opponent's effects. And with Insect Queen's multi-attack effect, they're certainly not too shabby in the closing out games department. Not all bee troopers are compatible with our game plan, but the ones that do fit are fantastic. Scout Buggy, as previously mentioned, puts another monster on board that, while not eligible to make Skoradiator, can make Giga Brilliant to sidestep into Corbage. Scale Bomber can help with this as well when paired with any other digital bug, but can also stick around to some interaction. Armor Horn is an exceptional way to get another normal summon, something the deck desperately needs, and all the monsters you banish make for great fodder to summon Mighty Neptune. And while the new fusion, Absolute Hercules, requiring 4 material is pretty lame, try Necrofusion, you might like it. As for other insects that work with our theme, Bachi 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 is an honorary digital bug, being a level 3 light insect monster. It even gives a monster that uses it as Xyz material an effect, allowing it to deal piercing battle damage. It's not really useful with Rhinocebus, but hey, Skoradiator puts monsters in defense position. Transicada can be special summoned from the hand with Web Solder or from the deck with Centibit, and the extra token it makes means you can easily access Bee Trooper Armor Horn or Insector Pico Felina, shuffling your insects from your grave back into your deck to draw cards. And we've got even more Insector synergies if you'd believe it, since all the best ones, Centipede, Dragonfly, and Hornet, are all level 3 insects, so you can summon them with Web Solder or Centibit, or add them to your hand with LED Bug. As for helping with position changes, there aren't too many good options. Enemy Controller would have made a great utility card, but can only change the position of your opponent's monsters. No Entry seems like our best choice. It lacks the proactiveness of a spell card, but can be used on our opponent's turn to blank a battle phase, all while triggering our digital bug's effects. As for a silly tech pick, I've got two. 
The first one is much more practical. It's Layer Wire. It's one-for-one -one monster removal that only requires you to banish an insect from your grave to activate. So it's pretty nice and has some small bee trooper synergy. For fun, play Corrosive Scales. It keeps your opponent's attack centered on one monster, hopefully a big boss you've managed to put on the field. And the kicker is that it's going to debuff your opponent's team by a lot. All monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack and defense for each scale counter on corrosive scales. It gets new ones every time your opponent normal summons a monster, special summons a monster, or activates any card or effect, but the amount of counters it gains each time is equal to the amount of each face-up monster your opponent controls. Eventually, even some of our more anemic digital bugs might become a threat to our opponent's monsters. Now, at first, I was fuming over the fact that this should be regular Great Moth in the art, as per the duel between Yugi and Weevil at Duelist Kingdom. But after a bit of research, the answer became quite clear to me. This is referencing Duelist of the Roses' perfectly ultimate Great Moth, who has a very similar effect. Good move, referencing the older titles, Konami. As a Yugi boomer, I am thoroughly impressed. And that's all I've got to say about digital bugs. They're janky, they're messy, not all their pieces fit entirely right, but they've got a fun aesthetic, do have some powerful synergies, and are cheap as all get out to boot. If you want a deck that operates at full capacity without having to spend a mint, pick these little fellas up, and you can build your own gaming deck from scratch. I'm sure you'll hive a great time doing it. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Do you agree that digital bugs are behind a firmware update or two, or do you think they can tangle with the toughest of code? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video around. It really does a lot to help me out. I'd also like to take this time to thank my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, CozyBoat275, Nebula Navigators, Benjamin Meisner, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Maven, Panther J, The Wizard Moose, and The Fresh Prince of Conair, Cosmic Crusaders, Chaz Ghost, Colin Todd, George Schaefer, Hakatana, The Legendary Raven, and Panda PLS, as well as all the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. And if you want to see another Xyz deck that's really in tune with its type, check out this video I did covering Hieratics. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye